You want to get started? Sound good? Well, they're recording. I know you can hear me, but the people that uh, we're not doing Zoom here, right? We're just recording this for those that couldn't make it today, might want to hear about it later. So when people are speaking, we're going to talk through this, like a talking stick kind of approach, right? So we don't have five people talking all at once. I know everybody has a lot they want to say, as well as listen. Um, but we'll start out with some introductions and a little bit of background. Um, my name is Steve Madrone. I'm your 5th District Supervisor. And I used to live in Blue Lake back in the 1980s. I lived here for about six years and was on the city council back then. Um, so that's who I am, and I'm going to pass it around so we can each introduce ourselves just real quick, our names, and maybe one little quick thing. No long stuff, please. <laughs> long stuff, no speeches. Make it quick. <laughs> My name is Linda Miller. Is this on? My name is Linda Miller, and I live in Glendale and have lived there since about 1996. My name is Dave Trobus. This is my wife, Heather, and we've lived in Glendale uh, off and on since uh, for 67 years. So. I'm Claire McAdams, uh, also off of Glendale. Um, I'm part-time. Uh, I, I divide life between here and Austin. Gerald Johansson, I live in Glendale, been here 34, 35 years. Gary Johnson, and I'm a, I've got a shop at Glendale, and I've been there for 20. Susie Alvarez, I have uh, industrial property on Glendale. I've been there almost 30-ish, almost 30 years. My name's Jake Morris. Uh, we have a business on Glendale. We've been there close to 30 years as well. Annette Nichols. I'm off of Glendale, and I've been there 31 years. Scott Frazier, Blue Lake Boulevard. That puts me in the county side of Blue Lake. In Swatsky, I've got uh, multiple investment properties and a residence on Glendale. Verda Pitts, I live in Blue Lake, 36 years. Krista Wright, most people know me by Chris Christie. Our family's had the ranch on Glendale for the last 70 years. Tuli Gately, I live on Glendale and Glendale. I'm John Nichols. Uh, we have Nichols Trucking. We've been doing business in Blue Lake for 40-ish years. I am Cindy Tropitz Thomas, related to that group over there. And we, um, I live at 2145 Glendale Drive in, in the family home that's been there since 1906. Okay, so as you might have noticed, there's a button there at the bottom. If you press that, then it goes off. They let us know that you know, it passes around. And the um, so I'm going to help facilitate here today. I've been asked by some members of the community to help do that. Some uh, had been at, it had been advertised that this was going to be a meeting with uh, Kernan Construction about some of the concerns over there. And Scott Farley and or some of their consultants were going to be here. But then there was a sense that that meeting was going to become kind of a let's all gang up on Kernan meeting and they didn't want to participate in that and I don't blame them. I know that the groups that we have been meeting with are very much interested in working together as a community to try and figure out how to take care of various issues. And uh, I have no issues. How about you guys? I mean, I'm perfect, right? It's like, uh, there's, there's always issues, right? As a community, uh, but we do better when we're able to work together on trying to resolve those issues, no matter what they are. So this meeting has morphed a little bit from that concept. I talked with Scott Farley the other day, partner at Kernan, and he absolutely wants to meet with the community. Uh, some measures have already been taken to make improvements. 
There are other things that I know the committee would like to see happen, but we're not here today to really delve into those issues deeply. So if you came just for that, you're welcome to leave if you want, but please, I hope that you stay because what we are going to try and do is talk about issues here in the Glendale, Greater Blue Lake area. We're not the city. I know we're meeting in the city, um, but as Scott said, he lives in the city, but on the other side of Blue Lake Boulevard is county, right? And everything else around the city is county. Um, the Rancheria has also got its own sovereign lands here. And as far as representation, Mike Wilson and I actually both represent the Rancheria. The line goes down the middle of it. And we asked them, do you want to be in one district or another? And they said, no, we like having two supervisors to go to. So that's what that is. So hopefully that clarifies what we're here for. Question. Yes. Turn and construction. A lot of people have concerns, and there's going to be a meeting with Scott Farley and Kern and Construction and their consultants in the near future to talk specifically about what the community's issues are with that operation. They have to do with runoff into the streams. It's a coho stream. They have to do with noise, dust, and other impacts uh, that the community has been engaged with Kernan for a while, trying to discuss those things. Uh, we also know they provide a very valuable service to the community. So we're trying to figure out how to work together to deal with those issues, but that's not what this meeting is for today. Is that clear enough? So what's the meeting for today? The meeting today is to talk about community planning in the Glendale area. So I apologize if the poster that was put out there or some other communications have led you to believe otherwise, but what happened was that felt like Kernan was gonna be coming into a let's go after Kernan meeting. And I've never found that to be a productive way of, of getting anything done personally. So I talked to Scott and he said, I wanna meet with the community, but not under that type of a situation, right? So does that make sense? Okay. Gary? Okay. Yeah. There was an effort. Yep. To get zoning in the middle of the county within the Glendale, right? You're correct. Yep. Does the county have a process and or schedule for that planning? That's a good question because that leads to what we're really here today to talk about, as it turns out, is community planning. So an update to that, Scott, is that at the end of 2017, the county adopted its new general plan. So the way that your land works is that there are general plan designations that kind of give broad guidelines on what you can do on your land. And then there's zoning. And the zoning gives you very specific parameters for what you can do on the land. This is 20 acre minimum parcels, or it's residential, or it's commercial, or whatever it might be. So the county completed their general plan in late 2017. And then they were supposed to then move to adopt zoning ordinance changes associated with that general plan update. But there was a concern that in certain areas like Glendale, Fieldbrook, one area, Willow Creek, Chesham Road area out in Redwood Creek, and the McKinleyville Town Center area, that there was a need to do more detailed planning and communication with the community before those areas could be rezoned. The other 99% of the county could be rezoned, and the county is going to be working over this next year to bring all those zoning changes forward and adopt the zoning changes that match up with the general plan update. So for instance, anything that was unclassified right now will be getting a classification. There will no longer be a U. It will be residential, commercial, industrial, whatever it might be, there will no longer be any U's. So if you are not familiar with what the general plan designations are for your property, you should go to the county's website, humboldt.gov, and then ask for the general plan update, you know, type it into the search bar, and the general plan will come up. And then you can look at your specific property and understand what was adopted by the board in 2017. That was before I was on the board, as far as how the general plan is going to change things. And then zoning will follow that. Right, so we're proposing to go ahead and move forward with 95% of the zoning changes, 98, whatever it is, 
We've been working. We finally got the town center ordinance worked out in McKinleyville. That's got an environmental impact report being done. And then it'll come to the planning commission and the board to adopt what is a very vibrant new thing for the downtown of McKinleyville. The town's, the uh, Glendale Fieldbrook plan was supposed to be coming next. And a lot of the people in this room have been working now for three or four years coming together, people of very different persuasions, Republicans, Democrats, independents, old time people, new time people, you name it, and working together to try and vision what kind of a future they'd like to see for the Glendale area. And they've put together a beautiful document here that Linda can talk with us in a minute a little bit more about. They kind of took into account all those things and they put out a survey to the community, et cetera. So the zoning in the Glendale area, which includes this part that you live in outside of the city of Blue Lake um, and Fieldbrook will have a chance to engage in some community planning to make it clear to the county what you want your future to look like. Fieldbrook did do a community plan back in 2014-15 and when the county updated the general plan, they didn't even take their plan into consideration. So Fieldbrook was pretty upset about that and want a chance to come back and say, hey, here's where we're at. For instance, Glendale, I'm sorry, Fieldbrook said, yeah, we want our, our water system, but they didn't want a sewer system. They were afraid it would increase development in the Fieldbrook Valley. And they're right, because there's a high water table there. It requires everybody to put in a Wisconsin mound or a pretreatment mound, right, because of the high water. They have a CSD that includes Glendale and Fieldbrook. It's the Fieldbrook Glendale Community Service District. But Glendale had to put in a sewage system because there was a lot of pollution up in Larson Heights behind the mill, which is now Royal Gold. There's a lot of clay hard pans back up in there. And so there was a lot of sewage on the surface running in the ditches, et cetera. And so they had to put in a sewage system. And then for a while, people were being billed like four or $500 a month for their sewage bill. And we had to step in there and work with the district to get that change so it's gone down but it's still quite expensive but fieldbrook doesn't have sewer it's septic systems right so there's these nuances willow creek chasm road believe it or not are part of the same community plan even though they're completely over a different side of the ridge that's an ancient thing from the 1960s or 70s and they're supposed to get a, a new community plan as well so glendale fieldbrook is next in line for the county to work with the community to update the community plan, which will then inform the zoning changes that would then be applied to property, okay? So there's gonna be a lot of opportunity for that. Unfortunately, you might've heard that our county budget has taken a serious drop in the bucket and we're running about a $15 million a year deficit right now. And we had about $40,000 in our reserve account and we spent 30 million, not thousand, 40 million in our reserve account. We spent 30 million of that last year and this year in our budget. Trying to maintain positions, maintain deputies, um, take care of our roads, which are horrible, um, and all that kind of stuff. And we only have 10 million left and then we're out of money in our reserve account. The state last year had billions of dollars of surplus. And this year it has billions of dollars of deficit. So it's a roller coaster right now. Um, and new taxes suck, frankly speaking, when none of us want that. But at the same time, the state has taken a lot of money away from counties over the last 20 years. And we're trying to figure out how to continue to manage our roads and other kinds of things. And we can talk about that more. But anyway, any rate, kind of long-winded trying to answer your question about where you're at with the zoning updates. Yeah. So the agency at the county is called the Planning and Building Department, and they have long-range planning staff. Right, but are they the only ones that they have to update, or is there? Well, when you do the environmental documentation work, so um, like we're getting, we're doing the EIR on the McKinleyville Town Center, we have to do all kinds of biological stuff and other environmental stuff and growing capacity issues, all kinds of things. So various experts, either at the county or consultants. So in that case, a consulting firm was hired with all that expertise to come in and prepare a draft environmental impact uh, report that then goes out to the public. And so the public has multiple opportunities during the process to engage, 
and make comment and have influence over the outcome of that plan. So it's the county planning and building, certain consultants, and the community. Make sense? Uh, well, the community doesn't, but yeah, most of the staff involved, it's not the sheriff, it's not uh, the DA, it's not Department of Health and Human Services, although all of those issues are important parts of a community plan. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a lot going on all over the place right here in Blue Lake. There's restoration on Powers Creek, and I know Gary's been involved in some of that, and some of it's been very frustrating trying to... <laughs> but thank you, Gary, for, you know, the work you're trying to do. Uh, I Well, that's about as honest as it gets right there. So, so I hear you, but I just wanted to thank you for, for that because I did a lot of work on Powers Creek when I lived here back in the 80s. Built some bridges, the one downtown. Yeah, and not much has gotten done yet. That's true. Yeah, you're right about that, Gary. Yeah. Well, I don't mean to poke a sore there. <laughs> So I'm going to try this system. We'll see how well it works. So we have one person at a time talking. I should have brought it out. Did you have something more to say, Gary? You said it. Okay, thanks. And you, I should have handed this to you earlier. So I'm going to try and see if we can try. Um, if we can try and talk about issues rather than people, that's a good one, right? Um, rather than blaming an individual, let's talk about what the issues. And even better is, do you have a solution? You know, because... That's really, really helpful. But after you speak, I want to let Linda talk a little bit more about the community planning and other support that you do as well. Karen Sawatsky, uh, my question is for Linda. Um, uh, in the general plan update process, there's some of us in the room here who have controlling interest of probably at least five or 600 equivalencies for as residential goes. Um, and that's what's there. Uh, my yeah. potential to build, we have entitlements to do that. Uh, unclassified, but uh, you know, eventually we'll go through. So I, I haven't ever had a, a survey uh, input on. You, you have a, a survey there, is that is that or a document? I'd like to get a copy of it. And I think the rest of us who do have have major holdings and potential input, which we'd like to have. I, I spent probably four years at, with the general plan process, updating there, going to all their meetings and attending everything they had there. Of course, we did have a a field brook tentative plan but the prior planning and building department didn't like it. So they basically cast it aside, which is really sad to see because I didn't participate, but a lot of the other people did. And so I'm looking forward. So are we able to purchase or get copies of that at the end of the meeting or how do we get that? Email's fine. So it's possible. So Perfect. I don't think that we have a link for it, but I did provide a copy to the library here. So they have a copy there. Um, we can loan you a copy. We only printed enough for our little group because, um, do we have a link? There's not on. Yeah, we should. If if we could get the city, maybe the city if, could if put If you it get your document to a standard, uh, there's two or three places that make things in Eureka, copy places down by the courthouse. I think if you forward that to them, then those of us who want to can go in and purchase our own copy of that, print it out, and we could have it bound. It's, it's a way I did it on the general plan. That's how I got a copy of the, the whole general plan when it was done. I did want to make one last comment here where I do have the mic. Uh, it's always been a pleasure to work with Supervisor Madrone. Uh, for those of you who know, we, we are working on a few other projects, one of which I think we should all consider as part of our planning is hopefully to develop a maybe just five foot wide or whatever we can get along Glendale, have that upgraded and paved. I live right on a corner there that is really a major problem. And I'd like to see the pedestrians and the bicyclists have a safe place to be there. This is something we can work on now and not wait for Annie and Mary Trail, not wait for anything. But if all of us get together, I think we can develop that. And if I have property that's needed and I've talked to my neighbors, we're all willing to donate a little bit or trade stuff back and forth. So that's that's something hopefully we'll move forward rather rapidly, not at the speed of uh, government. Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Just elaborate what you just said. So that's a solution. 
The question is, would that require forming an improvement district? No. Good answer. The answer to that is no, and we can get into that in more detail, but I want to give Linda a chance to talk a little bit more about what they've done. Yes, it was a limited group of people that were involved. I think maybe up to 20 at points of time, 10. There was like seven to 10 regulars. regulars yeah. And this sign-up sheet that you just put your names in contact is going to help the organizing group be able to reach out to more people, right? Because this is not over with. This is going to be something at the county, even though we have tight budgets, I'm hoping that over the next year or so, we can get together with you and start really getting serious about that planning effort. But I want to have Linda talk a little bit more about what they did, um, you know, summarize, basically. And then I can answer your question about the pathways, because I'm sure, I mean, that's you, that's the process for our meeting today is what are some issues and what are some solutions, right? And safe pathways is certainly an important element to our community. Glendale's kind of sketchy for that, but we can talk more about that. Here you go. That was, that was one of the strongest committees. Yeah, so second, what Claire just said is that, um, yeah, a lot of our, um, when we did our survey, um, yeah, having safe, bicycle and walking paths along Glendale Drive was a big part of it uh, that people, you know, voted for. But when we did the survey, it was uh, during COVID. Uh, during? After? Yeah, during, right. right. We did it just before and we analyzed it during. Yeah, yeah it, we published this, then not publish it, but we printed it up and finalized it in November of 2021. So, yeah, we were working on it during COVID. And um, basically, yeah, we started this group wanting to... Um, change you know not have the zoning changed without our i think i'm supposed to talk yeah. closer to this um we didn't want to see the zoning changed without glendale's input um uh, specifically and without a community plan so we we thought just some of us who were you know got together and went to the supervisors meeting to get them to hold off until we had a plan we you know got together and talked about it. We had plan you know t meetings about what do we want to see here? What's you know what is and, and how do we bring in the rest of the community? And so um, some folks thought of this idea of a community survey, and so we put a lot of work into it and um, getting questions that were appropriate and that kind of covered the spectrum as much as we could tell and um, would really bring things out of people. So we had all kinds of questions like, where do you live? How long have you lived here? Um, you know, would you like to see a bicycle uh, walking path through Glendale? Um, how do you feel about industry? Um, I don't, I wasn't actually quite prepared for this, but anyways, I don't, how does industry feel about the people? Is that what you're saying? <laughs> well, that too. Could I, I think. Can you interject something about just to let people know about the method? It's like the question is, or rather, what I'm thinking of is you need to know who we put the survey out to, who got to see it, who's asked to answer back. Mm -hmm. The answer was the answer is we tried to reach as many people as we could. Uh, this, since we started before the pandemic, we spent some tabling time at the Murphy Market on the weekend, trying to get people to aware of it and and either take it there on paper or or give them the the link to take it at home. And then the Blue Lake um, City government was kind enough on the utility bills. They put um, um, a message, you know, please please look at or take the the survey. For Glendale and Blue Lake, so that that was we did all the free outreach that we could do. Oh, uh, we posted it in front of the post office, the usual place you see flyers, so basically, you, mm -hmm. and that went on for maybe a month, roughly. At least, yeah. Yeah, and then and um and, and but the actual answers, uh, to the survey, most of them didn't come from paper; they came, uh, online. But some did come from paper. You're recognizing that. Some people in the neighborhood didn't do things like online activity. Do you start it to do this with that? Any final thoughts about survey data? Um, it was two 
Two, something like that. Out of that. the approximately 1,500 that got uh, the wings in. Uh, you getting a glare? The concerning is the picture of the lady who was in the house. The one on the left. Okay. Yeah. On the left one? Yeah. Of so, uh, that 270 responses that wow. they received, how many of those were actually Glendale residents? Glendale residents? Yes. Can you look it up? Do you still have um, these are things we don't know about much. Yeah, about here. I know. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and we weren't really prepared to go into detail on this at this meeting. Um, so, you know, you're certainly welcome to look at it. I think the, I think yeah, more. Yeah. Okay. I think the majority of people, just because, um, for whatever reason, Blue Lake people responded. At, I think it was over half, at least, um, from Blue Lake, but. You know, Blue Lake is kind of part of Glendale. You know, it, it's different, but there are people who use Murphy's Market and some of the, you know, different communities. Yeah, not PDFs, but right. Yeah, well, like she said, we we used a lot of different methods to try and as much as we could to get it out. I think we put it in the paper. Um, you know, we put stuff out at, at City Hall and at Murphy's Market and, you know. So the point is, it was a starting point. Yeah, and it's by, a starting by point. By a bunch of volunteers. Totally a starting point. Um, and there's a lot more to go, right? So those that weren't included, join in now. Absolutely. Spread the word, because there's going to be a lot more going on over the next year or so in this discussion. So when, when, when we do, let me finish one thing. I... Okay. Yeah. Okay, yeah, who got the surveys and how many responses? And how many actually? Sounds like less than 150 or so, maybe 100. Because half were from the other people. Yeah. 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 I'm just looking at the parts of the community where they're doing everywhere else. Because this sounds like this is a wide spectrum survey. We did the best we could to make it as wide spectrum as possible, but um, yeah. we, you know, uh, we have what we have at this point. We can look it up yeah. later, but I think the point that Steve is making is this is an ongoing cross. There's no reason to say that this is any be end or end all, you know, end all be all, whatever. Um, and that, you know, it's a starting point. Um, and we hope that we will start a community planning process that will include everyone who wants to participate. Absolutely, that's, that's the goal. Well, I guess I'll ask it one more time. Is there anywhere in your guys' research where there's numbers? Yes. So, that, so where we can get that. Okay. Okay. Oh, look. In literally hundreds of people. You know what, though? You guys are really, thank you. You really raise a great point. I mean, truly. Uh, it's also been several years since this was done. One of the, uh, what I'm trying to get at is, we didn't have a better way to reach people in greater Glendale as opposed to Blue Lake or Fieldbrook. But if anybody has a way to do that, that would be great. Uh, the closest we could figure out was tabling at, at the Murphy Market. No, when you have a tiny group of volunteers, that just wasn't feasible. Okay, well, we that's why we did what we did. We're not trying, we're trying to be inclusive, uh, but without, with a handful of people and no money, well, that's all we could do. Tours, I guess that's what they yeah. didn't do. No, we didn't. But the, 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 the yeah, ball? This time, the solution would be to do an updated survey. Yeah, well, potentially, yeah. Yeah. It's right. Most community meetings and a whole lot of other stuff. So that's, I think, the most important point here is they did what they could with the resources they had. They got the ball started. The county hasn't done it. So, I mean, good on you guys for your volunteering, but it's not the end all. And so we've got a lot more work to do before we change zoning to get to everybody that we can that want to be involved. So some people will never want to be involved no matter how much you move out, you know, but they might still come and complain later. And I'm not saying that's what you're doing because it's valid criticism that we didn't know Nobody reached out to you, you know, and I'm sure there's many others in the room that had that feeling. Yes? Please. So I have been taking part in the Blue Lake 
council commission meetings for the last year. I've sat in all but like four of them in the last year. Um, I can tell you it is a very common comment that I didn't know. Um, just uh, last month, someone stood there and said they had no idea that the city uh, center was being worked on. They had no idea of the construction. It had been talked about for three years, but there were still people that were saying that they weren't informed. They didn't hear about it. They didn't know about it until all of a sudden it gets tore up. So that is a very common thing of people saying, I didn't know. I, and I, and I mean, even Blue Lake hasn't figured out how to get beyond that yet. Um, how do you reach everyone? There's not a city newspaper. There's not a, there, there's not a lot of things that larger communities have that can reach more people. So I, I don't know what the solution is, but it is a very common comment um, over the last year of sitting in on meetings. It's a two-way street, right? I mean, you can only put information out to a certain degree, but then it's upon each of us to try and get informed. You guys, you showed up here today, right? To get better informed. So you took that step, and that's a lot of how it works. I mean, a democracy is hard work. You know, if we're really going to be engaged in our community, it takes both ends of it. You know, the government's never going to be capable of doing it all. In fact, the less it does, sometimes the better, frankly speaking. But we've got to be supportive of our communities. So who's got a quick comment? And then you? Um, Ken Swarovski, and uh, I really wanted to thank you for getting the ball rolling. It's a, it's a thankless job, and all the time it took, and I know it can be great. Uh, when you're trying to notify things like in the general plan process, some of, the, of, of us insisted that they send out a blanket mailing to everybody who is a property owner by their AP number. If you're only, and then you also want to go by your water bills because you're dealing with two different people. You're dealing with the property owners that get the AP. You're dealing with the tenants, and everybody needs to be represented in the thing. So I think, and today with with uh, with Facebook and other ways of getting things out there, I think if it's a group effort that all of us make. I think we can get the word out there, and this will be, in my opinion one of the first times when we're at a level now where we can really make that effort and nobody should have a reason when we're done because we'll knock on doors we'll go through all these different processes so when you guys get together and have a meeting well in advance and you have an agenda as far as what we're going to discuss some things scott frazier wanted to discuss different things that we had which is fine but i think if we all go about that and work as a group with steve madrone leading this he's a very good leader i think we can get a plan that at least everybody will say they knew about and they had the chance to participate if they decide not to, I guess that's on them. So thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you, Ken. I appreciate your work also. Um, I, I think you might find some resentment on our end of Glendale because no one um, that I know was contacted. Were you contacted? Bevy, were you, was your company contacted? I, I think between us here, who've not talked to each other about this issue, but we own most of the property from the corner all the way to the store. And by the time I heard about the process, people were doing walkthroughs of my neighborhood and making suggestions about what should be done with our properties without ever having contacted a property owner. We Some of this- that. that wasn't us. I, 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 and I wouldn't name a person uh, and- thinking about redevelopment and that's when you had people going through and looking at people's properties and so oh, this is blighted this is blighted this one's irregular um and kind of coming up with ideas that plan the redevelopment plan uh did not go forward and that was not this group um and and this group um the proposals were things that would never by any uh, Humboldt County Department be allowed, uh, just for several examples, um, to entice the elk to come down for the tourists down Glendale Drive. A fishing game would never get behind that. Uh, one of the proposals was a playground in my neighbor's uh, industrial lot, which they had never talked to the, to the neighbor who owned the property. Um, another, just things that would never uh, building student housing with no sewer uh, capacity in the Glendale uh, Philbrook area. I mean, I, th I think the last check I saw, they had like eight hookups left. There were like almost none. And and the workings of the sewer and water. And I just, 
got really worried at that time that the that the people were involved, which may not have been any of you people, had no idea about development, about industrial areas. And one of my, um, I'm not involved. I don't feel in the in the issue between Kern and, and their immediate neighbors. I feel that's an issue between them and their immediate adjacent neighbors. But I I do always speak up for industrial people because I been going through this all my life. Um, uh, uh, people, uh, you know, hating industry and industry having to have a place to go. And what I've seen happen in some areas, um, uh, Sebastopol area comes to mind, is they push, the uh, enough people can get together to push the industrial area a little farther out. And there's a tipping point where the products get so expensive yeah. to get to the people that need them that the, the it's not affordable anymore and then there's a huge public outcry about the affordability of the gravel and the materials and all those kinds of things and and those people will say well look there's all these places to go and there aren't those places to go there are no places to go they're all that's what the zoning does there's a certain a ratio of industrial properties that any given population given the amount of people that they have have to have, there's a, a, an amount of retail space they have to have, an amount of housing, an amount of affordable housing, it all has to work together. And if you eliminate any of those things, like industrial areas, then it it hurts everyone. Well, well said. I think, you know, you really hit on what is one of the kind of tug pull things happening in this community is that not that long ago, 30, 40 years ago, Almost everybody in Blue Lake and in Glendale worked at one of these in industries, whether it was Simpson Timber or Steve Morris Logging or Blue Chip Mill or trucking companies or any number of other things. And, and Julie's family has been on that ranch for five generations, you know, doing what they do there with cattle and pigs and all kinds of wonderful animals and pumpkins and everything else. But it's changed, right, from that past to where not everybody works for the industry and there's been sort of a change to some residential use a little bit more and and a lot of those people don't necessarily work in that industry so that's created this kind of a tug and a pull between the community but there are ways to make it better for everybody one respecting that these lands are in, are zoned industrial and i will tell you about the group that i've been meeting with in regards to the concerns about kernan is that they feel they've been really tolerant of those operations for decades. I mean, some of these families worked for Simpson for decades and at other companies, but some things changed last summer to where suddenly they were operating all night long and other things started to happen that just really, it pushed people kind of beyond their limits and it actually was outside of their permits. That's changed, this summer it's gotten better. There's still some concerns, but they have made the effort to really kind of come back within their, their permit area. But when you talk about things like the trails were mentioned, safe pathways, okay? So the Great Redwood Trail runs from Blue Lake, you know, through those, through Julie's property, through Kernan's property, through Morris property, all these different properties, there's this old railroad right of way. Now that railroad called the Annie and Mary from Corblex to Blue Lake was actually abandoned. The rest of the rail line from Corblex and Arcata all the way to the Bay Area was rail banked. When something's rail banked, what it did was secured that right of way for the future for a railroad to possibly come back someday. That's short form, what the purpose of rail banking is. But all across America, where these rails are probably not coming back, like the Eel River Canyon is pretty problematic, then they're turning them into trails and creating economic development around that type of thing. But the Annie and Mary was in fact abandoned. What that means, so along the Great Red, along the railroad's right of way, there are, were easements that people gave to the railroad back in the 1800s or early 1900s. And when abandonment happened, those easements reverted back to those underlying property owners. We no longer own those. But a lot of the right of way from Blue Lake to Arcata is actually owned in fee title. And so we're finalizing the maps to really understand where does the railroad authority or the Great Redwood Trail Authority Agency have fee title and where were their easements that have reverted back to those underlying landowners. 
because it wasn't rail banked, we could actually trade off those parcels. Like one of these runs right through Kernan's operation. Is this the only one? And it's not the only one. I don't know for specifics, Julie. We're still trying to finalize those maps so we really know clearly what do we own, what does the public own, and what went back to the landowners. Because where we actually owned the right of way, like in Kernan, we don't want to run a trail through the middle of that operation. It'd be better to have a pathway over by Glendale Road. And I've talked to Scott Farley about this. We might be able to sit down and negotiate that we swap out our land, 50 foot right away or whatever it is in places, some wider. And you want to go down, you want to go down Glendale and take 50 foot swap? No, we want to try and find where along Glendale Drive, there are places where we could do a- you go down Glendale. I know. Excuse me. You wanna, what? No, I, I, Gary, I said no. Gary, I said no. I said we have a 50 foot right of way that we might be able to let go of in exchange for maybe a 20 foot right of way or a 15 foot. There are places along Glendale Drive where it might be a lot better for the community to have a safe pathway separate from the narrow road for people to bicycle and walk, take evening walks or other kinds of things, and we can swap those lands maybe. It's just a conversation. I'm trying to look for a way to create a safe pathway in Glendale. The Annie and Mary is now proposing to make the pathway along the freeway in the freeway right of way from here down to Glendale. And then what do you do? You get off at Murphy's Market and what do you do there? I mean, it's pretty gnarly right out in front of Murphy's Market with no like curb gutter sidewalk. It's like free for all coming in and out. It's a really dangerous place. But behind the market, we actually own a right of way through Royal Gold. Is that where we want to run the path through their industrial site? Probably not. So I don't know what's going to happen, but I know there's opportunity that we might be able to swap off this land because it's not rail banked. We can trade it. We can sit down with the landowners. And you're one of those, Gary, down there. You've got property. Morris has property. Got two chances with me. Okay. Slim. Okay. I'll, <laughs> I'll take the slim. <laughs> I'm good with slim. And I've worked with Slim for a long time. I was the person who got the Hammond Trail built in McKinleyville. The county gave it up. When the river ate away the railroad grade, they gave it up. And I went in and negotiated with Bud and Diane Slagle, relatives of the old Matthews Machinery Company. And we made their lives better in exchange for us getting a right of way for a trail. So that happens sometimes. I know there's lack of trust in government. Believe me, I have the same lack of trust. And here I am in the government, you know, so... I just wanted to share that there is opportunity. That's an issue that came up. Please. Trails, yes. Very briefly. Okay, and then I'll come over here. Oh, I'm sorry. You yeah, can... yeah, please. Yeah. Go ahead. Trying to work. So I don't know if any of you guys remember Mike on the bike, on the yes. four-wheel bike yes. that was handicapped. So I was always really worried about him because he had to go down Glendale out, out in the road. And so we, I moved my fence back and left a place off Glendale to for him to ride his bike and he's gone now and that's still there but back then we didn't have the problems that we have now the everything has changed on glendale is a war zone some nights there's car bombings there's car thefts there's there's car fires there's 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 um there's drugs, there's um, violence, there's, and now, where before I would just voluntarily have made room for things like that, I can see a time coming where a trail would go through there, it would get out of control, like the Arcata Marsh, and there would be no services to come to anyone's aid out there because we aren't getting any services to come to our aid now. And we're being, um, uh, out vandalized, burglarized, stolen vehicles are personally and and all of our neighbors. And so I correct. Some may have been persons calling about this issue. Right. Yeah. These are not easy issues yeah. to solve. If I'm just real quick. Um, interestingly, most crime happens on roads, not trails. 
but nobody ever says, let's shut that road down because there's all this crime. I'm just saying that it's not the trail's fault. It's not the road's fault. It's us as a society and the breakdown of our society, which is what you're talking about. It's horrendous what's going on. So I'm going to let her get her comment and then to you. Thank you. I, yeah. Yeah, as uh, as a forest landowner, uh, of course, I have to be very cautious about trails because the prime cause of fire is humans. You let one in, you know, you take a risk. What I but that wasn't what I was going to say. This survey that we finished in twenty one, <laughs> one of one of the couple of the key findings. Many of the people that did answer the survey had spent a whole lot of their life, even their whole life here. They were very comfortable, totally fine with it being a mixed industrial residential neighborhood. What they didn't like was the lack, the, the change over time where people didn't know each other and didn't trust each other and fences were going up and weird stuff was happening. Uh, but but yeah, this this it was more than I would have uh, than I've seen in any other um, similar survey. Well, there there, well, there's a, there was a, a, a acceptance of, of multi uses. Yeah, no, I got those. I I I think that the people who respond from the Blue Lake from the city of Blue Lake have no idea what it. That's why I was shaking my head. We are a completely different ecosystem out there it's nothing nothing like living in the city of blue lake and so the, i i'm not i'm not asking you to disregard their input to the survey but as far as development on glendale itself i don't think that people in the city of blue lake have any idea what it's like out there we have to have someone watch our place every second that we're gone and i'm a small forest owner too and i can't leave that place because the second i do somebody moves in uh, and and so you you have to watch every single thing and some people in residences will say well i haven't had any problem well you may not have equipment and and stuff that people want, want to steal at hundreds of thousands of dollars worth sitting outside and so it, it's a it, it's a struggle for any business person in, in that area over there. Thanks for being respectful of each other, everybody. Appreciate that. I would just say that, you know, trails are great, but it is a fact, yeah. and I've seen it happen in lots of places. Once you put in a trail, you get travelers. And a lot of the travelers are, and I don't want to be, I guess, you know, they're the homeless are going to travel the, and they're the ones that are breaking in. They're the ones that are destroying the property and maybe not stealing, but destroying the, you know, the lovely property that we live in. Glendale is a very unsafe road. And I hear a lot of talk about making a safe passage, but um, over the years, it it has changed, and one of the things over, I would say, 30 years that has changed is the drainage, because we have new people moving in, new people building, and we have a lot of rain coming off the mountains behind Glendale that used to flow in a ditch. Now, if you make a walkway, I want to know a passageway, where is all that water going to go? Because there has to be some kind of drainage that goes, I believe, into Mill Creek along with Hill. Is it Hill Creek? Uh, Hall. Hall. Hall and Mill. And so that's my issue on Glendale is that because of development, um, the county doesn't even mow Glendale. They don't even maintain Glendale for safe for safe passage. So, yeah, as a community, we could do that, but do we need permits? Do, do we need flaggers? Do we need, you know, cones to do all that mowing? Because it's hectic. 
If the county would help maintain Glendale, it would be a safer place. If the county would take care of the drainage issue and talk to property owners about, a lot of the property owners have filled in their ditches and no longer have culverts, that creates a bigger problem for other property owners. And so there is a lot of issues that I guess would connect with safe passage, but the county's not even doing their part by mowing the road and, and taking care of, look at, at the bottom of Glendale, it floods every year. All the county has to do is clean out that passage, right? And we wouldn't have a problem with that flooding and the road being closed, but they don't. And I don't know if we're not, I guess, communicating with them. No. But, you know, shame on us as community members. But I have, you know, been working with the county to get my ditches taken care of. And it's taken me two years. And I haven't got there yet. <laughs> but they're starting. So safe passage is great, but the county has to collaborate with us. Yeah, we're not doing a very good job at all. And with it. Greenway Trails, I'm worried as a community. It does bring unwanted visitors. Yeah. Period. Fair enough. Thank you. Because we see the street. It's hazards because they can't light fires. Pretty much. Uh -uh. I just want to say, since you mentioned, you know, Kernan starting to work at night, it's Caltrans that designates anything between Fortuna and Arcata or McKinleyville on 101. Ninety-five percent of it has to be done at night. So. It's not going to last all year long. It may last a few weeks and then it'll be done, but it has to be done at night. So where are you going to get materials? You have to get it from the hot plant. You got to get it from the materials yard. You got to get it from somewhere. So in order for that to happen, the work has to be done at night. So it's not like Cal Kernan wouldn't change their program. Caltrans just had a job that happened to have dirt that needed to be hauled at night and the dirt was right where the pile is at and that was it. So. It's not like they're trying to stir things up or do something different, and it's not going to last forever. But it's but Caltrans. Did on the process, knowing that they were going to have to have sixteen hours, they didn't tell us about it. We got three or four weeks left, twenty-four hours a day, no no warning, no nothing. Uh, we went to the planning commission, and we had a couple of John uh, Ford and everything, and and uh, they sent a couple of. Uh, uh, letters to Kernan about uh, hours of operation. Never heard back from them. I mean, we we lived in our house. We built our house 30 years ago up there, and we never had a problem with Kernan until this last year. And so our responsibility is such, and their responsibility is to be good neighbors, and they haven't been this last year and a half. And the other thing that we're worried about is, is that uh, you know, we're getting to retire, well, we're beyond retirement age, and I've had some realtors come out, come out and friends, and, and they, uh, uh, they've they sat on our deck and said, well, you've lost about $100,000 uh, of your property value because of the noise. And I'm sitting here, what I can hear here is pretty much what we hear, where it comes right off that uh, floodplain and comes right up into our house, way up in seven o'clock when they, uh, uh, in the morning, we can have the TV on and the windows closed and we can beep, beep, beep. And it's, we love our house, but I don't like to live in our house now. So if you want to come up, no, it is, it is. It is. You have, you have to, they never worked on the floodplain. You know, and something that, that, that John John brought up, where Kernan's at right now was a chip meal. And it worked 20 hours, 20 hours a, sh a day for five and six days a week. Where Burbank Market is, Blue Lake Forest had a mill. Bonnie Sales had a mill for about 25 or 30 years. And they run two shifts, five and six days a week. Where my place is at, they work. There was a logging out. There was logging trucks. There was stuff. They work five and six days a week. You know, 
there's just always been this industry here, and especially like out at Glendale. Number one, to put try to put a trail through Glendale is absurd. You talked about the freeway along the freeway. Put them over there. How many people want to gander at houses and stuff? They're looking for the wild blue wildlife out there that way. You know, the thing is, you knew, I knew, I, I, but I'm, I, I'm old school. But you bought a place here and you just said, oh, I just lost $100,000. You knew when you came in that this was an industrial place. This community has always had has always had some type of work going on. What John said about the night shift. They worked the night shift down here, out here at, for for uh, for a number of years. They tried to minimize it. But like John said, God didn't ask to have to work nights. He, was he mandated. So he did on the contract. He did on the contract. And I will agree with you. It. If he didn't they, contact, he never, I'm sure, you know, well, just, Presumably, you had shared you had shared that you didn't get any contact. That that in some respects is wrong. Was not he should have had the 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 the, the foresight to, to look at something, but he's never had any problems with it before. The thing is, though, uh, you know, Caltrans demands that we work night shift. I hate night shift. I'd rather take beaten than work night shift. It's dangerous, but that's what they demand. And. The contractors, Mercer Frazier's running into the same thing. They, they're right down in Fortuna, not a word said. They're right in town. Right in town. Thank you, Gary. I think you're both highlighting what I said earlier is that things are changing. Almost everybody worked at one of these businesses back in the day. Do you know that it's always been a community of I live in I live in uh, Trinidad. Mercer Fraser has a quarry up at the top of Quarry Road, right? And the residents on Quarry Road that came in over the last thirty years complain. And I said, you know, you live on Quarry Road, right? So what these folks are talking about is that they understand. They know they've worked for industry. You know, many of them worked for Simpson and many other the industries here for a long, long time. All they're saying is that when somebody like Kernan agrees to a set of permits that says you can work Monday through Friday from seven in the morning till six in the evening and occasionally on a Saturday, but not on a Sunday. And when Caltrans says, well, you're gonna have to deliver whoever gets the contract, you're gonna have to deliver at night. We understand that that's what they're saying at Indianola because of traffic control in the day. Too much traffic to be doing all that kind of stuff. But that doesn't mean that Kernan then gets the right to work outside of his permits. It's like if I'm your neighbor, and I'm agreeing to behave by certain rules, like I don't have a cannabis permit. But I bring in a cannabis operator and say, just get over it. That's what I need to do. In order, I mean, you can't have society operate that way. We, we operate by the rule of law, where we all agree to certain things. And Kernan was operating outside of his permits. He probably should have never taken the contract if he couldn't do it within what his permitted hours were. Okay, and, and I understand the complexities of that. Believe me, Kernan, provides an incredibly valuable thing in that they were taking in all these materials from other jobs for like 20 years and building up soil piles out there for the day when those things would be needed on a job somewhere. So everybody gets that. They're just saying, please just work within your permits. That's all. And so Scott has now started putting squawkers on the machine because they're less annoying than the beepers even during the day, right? And mostly on Sundays, they've gotten quiet, and they really have tried this summer to come into compliance with that. So we're just saying that things have changed in Glendale. Not everybody works for industry anymore. And whether we like it or not, we're going to have to try and figure out how to work together as a community, or we're just going to be fighting with each other and, and saying, no, they're the problem. They're the problem. That's never going to get us anywhere. Thank you. you know? Go ahead. Sunday morning. I came to you on a Sunday morning and I said, Hey, what are your operating hours? Right? Because it's nice. It's nice to come out Sunday morning and have my coffee, but all I hear is beep, beep, beep. So I'm like, what are your operating hours? Neighborly, 
neighborly. And I think that's where we need to get. So, you know, I, I will I will complain. I have property next to a company that just came in that works 24-7 is the flaggers. Flaggers, right? They are next to you 24-7. It's not a fun deal, you know. So I'm like, okay, what am I going to do about this? Because they rent the space. They run 24-7. They're flaggers for Caltrans and other other things, but their headlights and their machinery and their generators go on right next door. <laughs> it's not fun, but you know, it's kind of like building a house in the woods and you don't expect skunks and raccoons to come in and get your stuff. Right. I mean, I've been here for, I've been here all my life. I've lived where I live for about 30 years and I knew it was a mill when I moved in. I dealt with the fact I couldn't hang my clothes out on the line because of the dust. I adapted. And I think that I'm not saying I'm willing to adapt the whole way of living in an industrial community, but we are a residential community too. And I think industrial and residential need to respect each other as that. I lived in Las Vegas when I came to Mill Operators back in the late 80s, and they had a new bar. And that went all night long. And I didn't complain. I knew I moved in there or whatever. But things change over time. Has changed. It needs to be dealt with. Yeah. You know, when the blue chip mill was operating, they had concerns from the neighborhood there at the bottom of Liscombe Hill about noise, dust, and traffic. And they made an agreement to only haul towards the freeway, not back down towards Morphy's Market and through the rest of the town. They hauled directly to the freeway which is an option. It reduces the impact for people. But this operation, well, <laughs> depends, on which, depends on which end of the road you're on, right? Yeah, I know, but at any rate, that was an attempt on their part to try and minimize the impact for some people. For those Not everybody else, right. yeah. Well, they actually live right, at, right across from the plant, but <laughs> yeah. But uh, the other thing is, was noise. So what they did is they built a bunch of buildings they started doing a lot of their operations inside contained buildings, and that reduced the noise for quite a while. I mean, if you live there, maybe not enough. I'm just saying that there are considerations that can be made to try and find, I think, what you're trying to say is that we've got to figure out how to work together here to minimize the impacts, but also recognize the value this industry provides to us in terms of jobs, resources, and all these things. And this is not an easy thing. That's typically why they don't put residential near industrial when they're doing zoning, but Glendale is mixed. Yeah, it, it, the because they were, mill they were the workers. <laughs> yes, correct. It changed. Yeah. Yes, it did. Yeah, so she, I'm going to go to those who haven't spoken yet. Oh, okay. She's next, and then you're the two. Okay. It's nice having you, too. First of all, our family has lived in Glendale in our same property for 67 years so we're not newbies we didn't buy there and all of a sudden we're going well we don't like this crap around here um the other part where things really changed for us this last summer was they started working in the floodplain and that has impacted the coho salmon coming up into our creeks noisy and hall and this is the first time in 67 years we haven't had any fish spawning in Noisy Creek and Hall. So we've been trying to work on doing restoration and we've been working with federal and state agencies to get the funding to do it because that water, they're coho, they're endangered species. And also that water runs into our drinking water. So our, our concern is really, we'd like to, enhance and preserve what we have there and since they started working down there on that floodplain and it is a floodplain um it's isn't that the designation it's a floodplain and and so that's that's the issue for us is that they weren't as bad or it wasn't such an issue when they weren't working down there it's not just the noise hours of operation but it's a degradation of a uh, a floodplain and that's a big issue for us and i think it should be for all of us in glendale because we like 
our life that's there. We like being able to see wildlife. We like being able to to enjoy, you know, seeing the fish coming up the creek or the elk or although the elk I, I gave up on my fences a long time ago, but they're still <laughs> they're still pretty. But no, I mean, and so I think we can live in harmony. And we did for 67 years. We did live in harmony until blue chip was a, a big bleep on the road. And then we were fine after blue chip. I think Crown Simpson terminated their their uh, contract for chips. Um, but we we didn't have problems until a year and a half ago. And then it was like basically a middle finger. And when we would try to call and talk to the owners of the company, we were not treated with respect. There are some folks who were say, hey, we'll put you up to go sleep at the casino. I'll leave your house and we'll pay for you to go sleep in the casino. I guess I'm probably saying too much. And for that, I apologize. More than anybody else. Yeah, but I, I would like us to be able to live in harmony. And I and I want to go back to that. I don't want them gone. I don't. I just want them to behave. Just, just be good neighbors. And I would call at 8 o'clock at night on a Friday or Saturday. Go, Kurt, be a good neighbor. I mean, I grew up with the Kernan family. And I wouldn't get a call back. And they just kept doing it. So there's a lot of um, disrespect, maybe considered on both sides. But I just had to vent. Now I think I feel better. So one thing we know for sure, we never get solved. Yeah. Right? There's always going to be issues and conflicts and problems. But we also know for sure that if all we do is point fingers at each other and blame each other, we're also never going to get anywhere. It's going to get worse. So... Not everything's solvable, but there are things we can do, and that's the stuff we grab on grab onto. Is what can we do to make it better? And that's up to you all to be involved in this community planning that's going to be coming your way over the next year or two to say what you want. How is this changing community going to work together and still have the jobs and the industry that we need for all these important reasons, but also have a Sunday that's quiet, perhaps? You know, it's not a lot to ask to have one day out of the week where it's quiet, you know, and that's Sunday typically. So I'm hoping that we can all kind of come together and figure that out over time. And again, don't put your expectations too high. We're not going to solve all of these issues. But with the right spirit, we can make progress. So your turn. Hey, so I'm on the other side over by um, <laughs> Nichols, and I think he just stepped out. Um, and I'm between Nichols and Royal Gold. And um, so my issue is more like I have a massive amount of dirt, dust, constantly. I leave my window open that much, and I've got layers of dust on my – I can write my name in my coffee maker every morning. And <laughs> and it's not acceptable to me, but I was like, well, I know it's industrial. I, I moved in a, a multi-use, you know, I'm zoned multi-use, and so I just kind of have dealt with it. But I I've – increasingly become upset not so much about the dust i mean yeah that's something i'm dealing with but i no longer have river access my kids can no longer go to the river we bought the place no oh, i i remember looking out my window and there's my husband my son and my other son all three walking in a row like little andy griffith or leave it to beaver walking down with their fishing poles to go to the river right down by Nichols, and that's been blocked off now the other access has been blocked off by Kernan, that back road where the trucks come in. We no longer have any access to the river, as a safe access to the river, which is unfortunate. I mean, I, I feel like we're, we're robbed of that. And that was one of the reasons we bought. We can put up with a lot, but we want to be able to play. That's, I mean, we want to be able to access the river like we've been able to. It's a very special place and we want to enjoy it. Uh, another thing that I would like to know more about is your squawkers you're talking about. What are those? Because I get migraines from the beeping at Royal Gold and I, Royal Gold and us, we have a really good communication. They're great neighbors. If you ever need soil, they will hook you up. They are great neighbors. We've never had issues with them. But if I could bring that to their attention, I would be extremely happy. Uh, just that one change alone. Now, see, this is something that's super doable. Yeah, yeah. Pretty for... much all the industrial, it, it costs some money. But it's not, my understanding is it's not for a fortune to do. But there's this 
It's like a quacking duck rather than a beep, beep, beep. And it puts out a lower decibel sound and a less annoying sound. It's more like. I would appreciate. So Kernan has already put that on some of their equipment. Go ahead. No, not all yet. But he said he's not done. It's, if it's expensive, I understand that it takes time. But Royal Gold, I would love it because I think some of the people just well, constantly I have some back up. Um, a neighbor of ours is one that told us that uh, Royal Gold had used these, and he didn't. He didn't hear them, but he heard that there were concerned neighbors around Royal Gold, and that they had changed to these quackers. But you, not, not, not enough, not, maybe. Not, not enough, maybe. They're bagging the silent hills. Oh. My backyard. Oh. Well, maybe they would be, you know, interested in doing more of them. But Kernan has installed some, and it has made a huge difference at our house. So good for them. Thank you for, to them. And, um, yeah, it's progress. I, <laughs> Here. <laughs> I'm your neighbor. I'm uh, I'm right by your uh, construction, your trucking company. So I'm like right across, kind of. We get a lot of. I'm at the bottom of Larson Heights, so we have a lot of dust, a lot, a lot, a lot of dirt. And I think oftentimes, oh, a water truck might get run once in a while. I don't know how often, but it gets really bad. And I don't know what we can do about that, but I'd like to keep our communication open and be respectful with each other. And if we could maybe somehow get. Why don't you talk to? Why don't you talk to the? I've called. Twenty-five neighbors that are above you on Larson Heights. Twenty-five neighbors. There's thirty houses up there. Have them fire a water truck because that's where a lot of your dust comes from when they come right down that hill and come right out. Our it's our road is our road is from underneath that bridge. Our road those is truck, those cars come off that hill and up and down that. Hill. Our road is paved. The dust flies. Okay. The well, dust. I see I see the semis pull out underneath the bridge, and they pull right underneath there, and it just swirls up. I mean, from what I can see. So I'm not trying to. There's a big section of that right underneath the bridge there, man. That's all dirt. I, that that's. Doesn't belong, belong to him. Doesn't belong to no. All but his trucks, they, they're, right. okay. I'm not trying to argue. I was actually trying to be really respectful and ask respectfully if maybe we could do a little more watering. Or if you guys do have the water truck out, maybe you guys could throw a little water underneath in that spot, underneath the bridge. I'd be stoked. I have noticed. Yeah. If you look at, like, the amount of money that that I put into it is minimal compared to, like, what current has spent control of it. There's hundreds of thousands of dollars spent building that big control pond. And they're pumping the trees 24 hours a day, which is well, beyond more than what any other site does around here. Well, I know I that talk about what I've done. anytime I've ever called, it's been almost instant. You guys have had someone out there dealing with it. I don't like to call and complain. I don't like to it's do that. Not. It's been respectful. Entrance out here like a week ago. <laughs> like a yeah. Well, it's also royal gold. <laughs> they have the dirt. Go out once and come in once. Right. An another another thing you missed was uh, the river access. We really missed that. I wish there was a way we could at it's least. Not my, not my ability to control that. That's uh, crazy. It's Kernan owns that under the bridge. Yeah. Yes. We need to sand the Mercy Fraser now. The Sunbird. 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 Yeah. Okay. That blocked it off to Nichols. Their fences. Your fence is one fence. They blocked it. Okay. 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 I understand there was concerns about all that, but we're talking about the road that goes from Glendale down past Julie's Fields. No, 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 no. Okay. Steve, clear back up the overpass. Oh, right by. I Nichols trucking. Sunbirds. Sunbirds. Yeah. Why don't you lend the Sunbird over? No matter. You know, there's, the, 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 there's nothing better than direct communication, and right. that's right. what we yeah. have Thank you. because you showed up here because you showed up. Mm -hmm. You can share with each other what's, you know, some of the things and then follow up later. I appreciate your comment, Gary. It, it, it's on all of us, right? We all probably have stuff we need to do to make it better for our neighbors, right? An industrial operation, though, creates a larger impact probably than somebody in their little house. But 
even in a little house, you can have all kinds of impacts on your neighbor if you're stealing and, you know, whatever the guy that's in jail now, he's the head or something, running around the neighborhood, terrorizing everybody. I mean, just one person can be a nightmare, you know, out there with this kind of stuff. Uh, so I've been writing down the issues as they keep coming up, not that we're going to solve all these today, but so far I've got safe pathways, crime, drainage, homeless, fish, safe access to the river, industrial noise and dust, how does residential and industrial work together, elk was brought up. So these are all issues, right, that in community planning, we can try and take a look at these and think about, well, how can we make this better on each of these issues? One of the things you probably all know about is there's a really massive dioxin spill, pretty gnarly chemical, underneath what used to be the old mill site. And as long as they were pumping the wells there to wash the logs when they were debarking and all that, the water table was depressed and it was down below. So when the mill shut down and all that, they discovered there's this really gnarly dioxin spill, which is a carcinogen, and it got into the river and it killed fish, and it's going into the river right above your water supply. That's where the rainy wells are in the Mad River, right? Yeah. So it was a big deal. And the solution from the state of California, the state's solution was to cap that area where the dioxin was with concrete. Because the water table was so low, it wasn't migrating anywhere. But now that well's not being pumped, or wells. And the water table has come back up. It's really high coming off of Larson Heights anyway. There's a lot of water up there because of that hard pan up there. And so the water tables came back up, and now it's starting to disperse that dioxin material out from underneath the concrete slab. That's a huge issue, and Royal Gold is dealing with that in their permitting process. There's no easy solutions to that kind of a situation, but it's not good, you know. So there's a lot going on, and sometimes in our industrial past, we didn't know what we know today. I mean, I have watched the timber company's ability to build roads and maintain them and protect our fish come from like, it wasn't that they were bad people. We just didn't know how to do it like we do now. So we've learned a lot of things in the last 30 or 40 years about how to take better care of the roads. I, as a board member, I'm the vice chair of the Great Redwood Trail Agency as one of my board of supervisor appointments. We've got a nasty trestle on her property there along Glendale Drive, which is not only a, an attractive nuisance for kids to go out that might end up if they get injured suing their family, but it's full of old rotting creosote beams and rusting iron. And you can look in the creek and see these iron deposits in Noisy Creek, another tributary to Hall Mill Creek. Uh, it comes in right down at the mouth. But So there's a lot of things. And again, I'm going to say it probably like I said it three times. When we come together and share with each other our concerns and more importantly, possible solutions, and we don't say you need to, we say, here's what I'll do to make it better. And if I could talk with you about things that maybe you could do, you know, then we're going to get stuff done. It's never going to solve all this stuff. But if we don't do that, I don't know what we think we're going to have for a future here, right? We're going to continue to have a horrible future. And as a society, I mean, things are falling apart all over the mental illness, the drug use, it's just out of control, right? And there's a lot of reasons around all that, but None of that is easily solved. I mean, I get people all the time, when are you going to solve the homeless problems, Steve? You know, I'm like, oh, God, believe me, I'm I'm trying, but it's not easy. So you had. Yeah, I'm going to talk about something while you're here, Steve. Um, so there's a culvert right directly that goes kind of underneath the backside of my house. Uh -huh. And it goes, it's underneath the Glendale roadway, and it feeds down underneath the driveway below me. And it is completely just falling apart. Yes. And before you know it, the whole road's going to fall up there. Yeah. My house is going to be at jeopardy. Yep. Um, and right now my house is in probate, so I can't even get insurance on it. I've tried to get insurance. So if that does collapse, which it already is collapsing, yeah, I can lose my house and have no way to. Sounds like a county covert yeah. under the county road. And so what you could do is take pictures. Yeah. Can you send me an email with those as attachments? Yeah. And in short form, say, here's the issue, here's the problem. Would you please tend to They're it? They're aware of it. They're aware. Oh, no, they are. But the one thing like I can do is put pressure on yeah. them. I will say that we only have half the staff on our road department that we had 20 years ago. Yeah. Half the staff. Ever since Prop 13, and I don't want to blame it all on it, but 35 years ago, we passed Prop 13, which was good 
Because if your neighbor sold their house for a million and you had bought yours for 50,000, suddenly yours was worth a million. And that wasn't fair, especially to seniors, people on fixed income. So we got rid of that way of property taxing people. Now you're only taxed based on the value you buy it at and an incremental change each year, a small one or 2% per year that it goes up. But what happened when Prop 13 passed is we lost all the income that they gave us for schools, police services, roads, and all these other things. So what have we been doing for 35 years? Trying to replace that money with what? Sales tax, right? And that's just a horrible way of funding government and doing stuff. But I don't know any other solution. So we've got a sales tax measure on the November ballot with money that is going to be earmarked for roads because we've got to be brushing these roads twice a year, not once a year. The fire danger alone, I mean, fire starts lightning, power lines from winds, and chains dragging her cigarettes along the roadside. And if we're not mowing our roads, it's only a matter of time before, and that affects our fire insurance. People are not are losing their insurance, you know, in rural areas like this, where if you haven't already lost it, it's probably gone up to 8,000 a year rather than 1,000 a year, you know? And you have to go to the fair plan, so-called fair plan. Uh, it's a joke, you know? So please send me an email with those pictures, and what I can do is pressure, say, hey, I want to know when you can take a look and schedule this. Yes, because this is a danger for the community, it, too. If there's collapses. so much of that. There's so much of it, believe me. I mean, Fieldbrook Road doesn't get mowed. West Haven, and all, none of our roads are getting mowed hardly at all anymore. And kids are trying Yeah, yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. Start, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Go down below the road table and start from ground zero because that's why we have drainage problem is because they keep raising the road as they pave. The road is getting higher and all the property on the edges of the road are flooding because the county keeps on lifting the road. So they the have to do it right. Hill Creek are also on the side. Every time it rains down here, it floods the road. Yes. I mean, that January 16th event was a big one. Right? It wasn't the long duration flood, but it was a high intensity rainstorm that dumped four to five inches of rain on Glendale in about 12 hours. And that's when Kerman's yard got overwhelmed. Yes, they spent a lot of money building a big retention pond and all kinds of things, but they were completely wiped away. Because they're right down to this road right here. So you have that place to operate when it got rain. But when they were working only in the upper yard, it's higher. It's out of the flood plain. Anyway, lots of things. So, um, Kent, you've been very uh, patient. So, uh, if you wish to have a, you have a problem with the county, uh, tomorrow there's a meeting, the supervisor's chambers. You get three minutes, and you can go in there if you show up right around 9 or between 9 and 9.15. And frequently, I'm the only one in there commenting. So, if you want to get attention, you get, ten, you, you get 10 people in there for three minutes, and they got to listen to you for 30 minutes, and you get your say. 30 minutes for 10 people. <laughs> there you go. So so I highly recommend you avail yourself of that uh, if, to get your point across uh, because that's how you can get to go direct. You get to go through 20% of it going through Steve. You get to go through 100% if you have all five of them listen. And Tom Madsen, Director of Public Works, is usually in the room along with John Ford on planning. And so you're going to get all those people. I did want to make mention regarding the fish topic. Um, I've been looking forward to someday working with Steve Madrone in some of my property because I own 16 acres down uh, down in Julie's Patch down there, putting a, in a coho restoration pond. The problem you're going to find, unfortunately, with the fish is they're nowhere this year. They, 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 all the cricks are pretty well dead. And there are methods to refurbish those. Unfortunately, uh, our hatchery system isn't it. It's called a breeding box. And I'm hoping to work with everybody to go ahead and restore those those fisheries. You basically take the eggs, they're pre-fertilized, they go in this breeding box in the stream, those fish then pattern and they come back there. So if you get 10% of all the fish you put in there, they can come back quick. So I, I look forward to working with Supervisor Majority and any of you to refurbish our, our fishery here, but it's gonna take a major effort because human race has pretty well messed the whole thing up. The ocean's not functioning anymore, neither are the cricks. They come up to, and the elk are gonna be there no matter what. <laughs> They've expanded. So when I lived here, when I lived here in the early 80s, you know what they called Powers Creek? That's the creek that runs through downtown. They called it Crazy Creek, went into the mad, or they called it Shit Creek. 
And I discovered from the lady that used to do Dorothy, who used to do the Blue Lake notes in the paper forever and ever. And, and I was building the bridge above the post office over the creek. And she said, you know, Steve, there used to be a bridge there. They called it Spooner's Bridge because all the teenagers went out there to kiss and hang out. But she said there was a history in Blue Lake of multiple bridges over that creek with outhouses on top of the creek. And so back in the 1920s, the, the, the way that we dealt with sewage in Blue Lake was defecate into the stream. And for six, seven months out of the year, it went into the river and it went away, you know, but the summers were putrid. And people didn't see it as a creek. When I came here in the 80s, it was loaded with garbage all through the downtown and above the post office. So I thought, well, if we build this bridge, which is a piece of a trail on a city right of way, suddenly people will be able to come out over the creek and see it as a creek. And they might take better care of it. And they have. There's less garbage dumping. I mean, these are little incremental changes that we can make in things. It wasn't a big trail, but it was replacing something that had been there before. And uh, I like to call it Magical Powers Creek, but Gary probably has his own name for it these days, I imagine. But I know, I know. That was not an opportunity. <laughs> well, we've had a good discussion. It's been an hour and a half. Again, we're not going to solve these problems today. But if you have other issues, please email me, call me. I've got some business cards if anybody wants one. She's been calling me. Please, yes. Glendale's like the ugly stepchild. Yeah. Nobody wants us. McKinleyville doesn't claim us. Blue Lake doesn't claim us until somebody needs something. Until something happens, there's an emergency. And that's the first place they go for help. They hit all uh, everybody out there up for help. And, and so I guess I'm just asking on behalf of the people of that side of Glendale for a little respect when it comes to input and planning and there's only a small amount of property owners out there that could be contacted directly that um, have are most familiar with the history of the properties and the history of the industry out there and the history of the of the uh, situation with all the groundwater and everything so we'd, we'd all appreciate that absolutely no, that's well spoken thank you we do live together in the same community I mean, I don't live here. I just try to represent you. But I thank you all showing up here today and the civility you've shown to each other in this room. Sometimes it got a little heated. Sometimes <laughs> somebody expresses something really strongly that makes the person feel like not hearing me, you know. Um, yeah. But it is a process. And I applaud you all for being respectful and trying to listen to each other. I think that's where we learn. And then from that, hopefully, we can create some solutions. So. I look forward to working with you on the community plan updates and figuring out where we're going because it's a little more complicated than the days when almost everybody in every house worked for the industry. It's just not that way, and I don't think it's going to go back. For a while there, it looked like it was all going to become cannabis in Glendale uh, if Patrick Murphy had his way and a few other people, but not all. No, definitely not. But there was definitely a push there for a while. Any industrial and commercial land was like, oh, and that's a whole other ball game. The whole cannabis thing is. <laughs> we said because you're McKinley Bill different. Yep. Billbrook is Glendale Water. Yeah. So need a phone number. Yeah. And Phil, who are you? Took me living to hell. Free, freaking can't. <laughs> well. And if you think about the name and you go back 200 years, Glen Dale, it was one big wetland, right, out there before the freeway was built and all kinds of other things. I mean, Glendale was the highway. Right. It was the old highway before 101, 299 got built. It was a wagon road. And it went up over the top of. And how many mills was right there? Right there. Right there. At what, right in here at Murphy's, right there where we're at? Where yeah. we had that property, there was four mills. Five mills. Yeah. Five mills. McNord Mill was there. Uh, Blue Chip was uh, not as well. Macintosh. Mm -hmm. uh, we worked seven days a week. Oh, yeah. Yeah. All night and all week. We, they checked off or doing folks' place on the other side over there where uh, you reached out of Galilee. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. Well, when I bought my when I, when I bought my house when I bought my house in Blue Lake, 
the ceilings were six foot two. And it's because back then a mill end was anything shorter than eight feet. <laughs> right? So a lot of these Portuguese loggers and others, pretty short people, you know, they would take mill ends home and build their little house, you know, and stuff. And so that was interesting. <laughs> yeah, throwaways. It has changed, but you know, it's a beautiful place. I think you have a lot going for yourselves. And this next year or two is a great opportunity to be engaged, show up. Don't rely on somebody else to let you know, you know, figure it out. Get get on various mailing lists. And and this group is going to do their best to continue to expand outreach. That's what I heard today. We've got a sign-up list here. Linda, did you have something you wanted to say? Um, okay. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I guess... I guess I would also like to thank everybody for being here and for expressing your concerns because that's really what we need, you know, to make it a, yeah, it's a first step to making it, a, you know, a real cohesive community and getting what everyone wants, you know, and, and yeah, making it a, and we do have fish usually, and we'd like to bring the fish back. So that's definitely one thing we're, we're working on here and there and, McAdams and Trobitzes. Well, you know, um, but we need all of those things. We need the fish. Well, that's part of the thing. That's part of the restoration is to bring the water too, because we definitely need water. We all need water, and the fish need water. No, no, that's not what I meant. <laughs> Let's wrap up on a good note. Anybody have any final things to say? You good? Yeah. Hang on. When they restore Glendale Drive, the road, I hope that nobody has a problem if it's at night. That's all. Construction. Um, all right. Thank you, everybody. Really appreciate it.